Welcome to Media Literacy 2. These are the flipped activities for week 8. So we are almost done with the theme of images. We are right here. Uh, at this moment you're working on your project and today I would like to introduce a few examples of finished projects. I've showed you a couple but I've got two more that I'd like you to look at and also getting you, giving you, excuse me, uh, some tips about getting people's attention in print. You have seen this project in the past and as some of you have pointed out, yes, it is a very technical um, image, right? The students used a computer and a tablet to draw, so this might be a little um, challenging for some of you. But still, I wanted to remind you that if this is a skill you have, please, by all means, use that skill. This project shows that if you're just good at drawing, you can also do it this way. Right? The students just used a pencil and um, mainly uh, pinkish colors to uh, add some colors to the uh, project. So again, you don't have to be good at um, using a computer to draw, just being good at drawing. The next project I'd like you to have a look at is actually a video. So please go on the website and watch the video called Unique Same. Hopefully you've watched the video and I just wanted to point out that on the worksheet you have the explanation connected to this video. If you are going to use a printed medium a printed medium is anything but a video, basically, right? So it could be a drawing, a painting, a picture, a six-word memoir, a collage, right? So anything that you will have to print in some ways. Well, if you are going to use a printed medium, I have some tools, some tips, uh, so that you can get people's attention. And to do this, I'd like you to please go ahead on the website there's a video called testing your awareness i'd like you to pay attention to the white team you actually have two teams in the video a white team and a black team so pay attention to the white team and count how many passes so a pass is when a player gives the ball to another player so how many passes does the white team make I love this video because the first time I actually watched it, I did not see the moon walking there. I was really focused on counting the number of passes and just could not pay attention to something else. So for me, this is a great example of proving, showing to people that even though they think they pay attention, no they don't. They can't actually. Let me explain why. The reason why I didn't see the moon walking bear or, and why you may not have seen the moon walking bear is uh, called inattention blindness, right? The fact that you are blind because you don't pay attention, right? In reality, you see, but um, because you're not focused, you're not paying attention, you don't see something. And the reason is our brain on a daily basis, on a, every sec, every second of our life, the brain receives a lot of input, a lot of sensory input, right? The smell, the art, what we see, what we hear, uh, what we touch. All of this is coming to the brain and it has to sort it out. He has to figure out what is happening, right? So the research says it's 40 billion sensory inputs every second. It's just incredible. So the brain has to kind of decide to not pay attention to some things, right? It cannot pay attention to everything. It's just not possible. But this being said, most people think that they sufficiently pay attention to everything, right? It is our belief that, no, 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 I'm paying attention, I am noticing. But in reality, it's not true just because it's not possible. 
So think about all the messages we see, receive every day. So if you want your message to stand out, to be visible, to be easy to see, you need to attract attract the viewer attention, right? This is your responsibility. So here are the tips, the tools that you can use to get people's attention. It's shapes, colors, fonts, and human faces. So let me explain each one of them. Colors and shapes, right? You've probably noticed that when you create something, you always have all these shapes and colors to play with. So how can you really play with them to help your message stand out? Well, first, let's um, do a little reading test, right? Um, when you look at this image, what is it that you read? As far as I'm concerned, I am reading Stop War, Peace Now. How about now? What do you read? Personally, I read Stop Peace War Now. Right. So here, if you think back at what you just saw, it's the color and the shape of the background that changed. These two examples for me show how um, especially colors are powerful, right? Because I read the messages according to the color of the background, right? So I followed either the black background or the um, lavender background. So that's what influenced the way I read the message. And as you can see, the two messages are very different, right? So just a, something to think about for your project. How can you use shapes and colors to make your message clearer or maybe ambiguous, depending on what you're looking for? Next, font. And again, I'm asking you to look at the two sentences and decide which one is easier to read. As far as I'm concerned, I cannot tell. So if you're in the same situation, don't worry, uh, you're not the only one. So here we're looking at two different types of font. One is called sans serif and the other one is called serif. And basically, serif is that those little um, marks at um, the beginning or the end of the lines making um, the letters, right? So they uh, may be looking maybe a bit more sophisticated. <laughs> this is not a wordplay with my name. Um, whereas the sans serif is just finishes, you know, it, they finish in a kind of abrupt. There's no cute ending to them, right? And actually, research say that um, sans serif and serif, it doesn't really make a difference in terms of um, easier to read or not. The reason it doesn't make much difference is that uh, people identify letters through pattern recognition, right? So if you're looking at all these different fonts, people are actually just looking at the pattern of the A. That is something that goes up, down, and across, or simply two in a, a peak uh, shape and then something across. That's what they're... Um, the brain is looking at to recognize a letter. It doesn't uh, pay attention to the stylish aspect of letters. So font style doesn't matter. Just use something you enjoy and you think uh, is beautiful and easy to read. But I would say keep it simple, right? Especially 
these type of fonts get really tricky to read, right? Because here you got the P and the L uh, mixed together. Um, so I would go with a simple advice of simple is better. Now, what does matter is size. The font size matters because I don't know if you can read this, but this is how I have to zoom in for you to be able to read. Can you read this, right? This is the original size, right? So the size of your letters matters. Um, so the important question you have to ask yourself regarding size is basically what are the important pieces of information in your message? I think the most important pieces of information should be the most visible, right? The pieces of information that are the easiest to see. And here, um, this is more for... I was so surprised when I learned about this that and I find it so interesting that I want to share it with you. Um, and maybe you have been baffled yourself. So basically, you've got Arial and Times New Roman. And I'm just asking you to look at it and decide which font style is bigger. Well, technically, if uh, you are using a um, word software or a PowerPoint software, um, the font here size is 32 for both. But I personally had the impression that Arial was bigger than Times New Roman. That's why I've put the two together, right? So the question then is, why does Arial look bigger than Times New Roman? Well, it's all based on the X size, yeah, the X height. So basically, you have to look at a X, right? And the X is kind of the, um, the letter which is going to decide the size of all the other letters, right? That's why it's called the X height for all other letters. So basically, you have a line going at the top of X and then a line going at the bottom of X and then you add space at the top and space at the bottom for letters like H, right, or L or D or at the bottom P or Q. So the ascender space and the descender space. And that makes the point size of um, a, a type of font, right, so the size of a font is based on the size of an X. As you can see here, Arial, the font Arial, has a bigger uh, X than Times New Roman. So that's why Arial looks bigger than um, Times New Roman, but in the end the point size remains the same. It is still a 32. Last but not least, I would like to talk about human faces. So if you look at this commercial, I'm curious to know what do you see first. Surprisingly, even before I read about all this and educated myself, I did see her face first. This is where my eyes went first. And then if you wonder what I saw uh, next, it's actually um, the name of the brand. So, we tend to see human faces first. The reason why we see human faces first is because we see them faster than anything else. And here, some of you know I'm interested in how the brain works, so I'm going to explain it that way. Um, it, um, researchers have found that in the brain, there is actually a part of the brain that is really good at recognizing faces, right? It's called the FFA, the fusiform face area. And here on the little drawing, it's the, the red 
uh, the two red zones in the brain, right? So what happens is that this area, these areas actually for the two of them, um, they, um, when we see a face, instead of going the long way, the long recognition path, it has kind of a shortcut, you know, like a secret passage so that faces go directly to our brain and we can recognize them. And not only do we recognize faces faster than anything else, but we like them. We like human faces. And yes, I chose a picture of a smiling baby just to prove my point. And again, the reason we like human faces is connected to the FFA, the fusiform face area. And this, these areas are near the amygdala and the amygdala, it's the, is the, oh, let's see, we got two of them, are the emotional centers in the brain, right? So basically, they are close to them, which means that the emotional connection is also very strong, right? The closer, the better, usually. So, um, because human faces are close to our emotional center, centers, again, we've got two amygdala, uh, well, faces have an emotional impact on us. So, considering that we see faces first, or at least faster than anything else, and that we like human faces, um, we should use them. And even more so when you look at the eye tracking research, right? So eye tracking means the researcher is looking at where your eyes is looking, basically, right? So it tracks, it looks at where your, how your eyes are moving. So according to the eye tracking research, if a picture of a face looks away from us and toward a product, then we tend to look at the product, right? So that's why I used this picture, hoping that you would pay attention to what she is looking at, right? So according to the research, with this type of picture, we tend to look at where she looks, right? So again, faces are what we recognize Fast, the fastest and we like them and on top of it they make us look where the person is looking so a very powerful tool when you think of um, your project I believe in conclusion you can use shape and colors to get people's attention because shapes and colors influence what people see you can also use fonts just keep in mind that there are no differences between serif and sans serif. Just keep it simple. In addition, if you want your message to be to look bigger, then I would encourage you to use a large X height font. Last but not least, human faces are wonderful to attract people's attention. The reason is people recognize faces faster than anything else. And people like human faces, so it's a good way to get them interested in your message. And also, you can use the direction where the person, the face in your project is looking at to attract people's attention to a specific part of your project. This is the end of Flipped Activities for this week. Thank you very much. In terms of reference, I want to point out that most of this presentation is based on Vinecheng Susan's book called 100 Things Every Designer Needs to Know About People. It was published in 2011. Thank you.